Discipline. Discipline stoners. The gateway drug to mindfulness. Gateway drug to mindfulness. Let's roll one up and take a hit. Gateway drug to mindfulness. Let's roll one up and take a hit. Gateway drug to mindfulness. Let's roll one up and take a hit. And welcome back to another episode of Discipline Stoners. I'm Eleven. My name is Winnie. And we are the gateway drug to mindfulness. And today we have a very special episode because what? We have, yes, I will introduce our guest today. This is something that Evan and I have been wanting to do with each one of our parentals. So this guest that we have on this morning is a um, very... Uh, studious horseback rider in, for, for all of her life. She um, has done, for most of your life. No, when I was little and and then I didn't ride for a very long Some time. Some of your time has been all. Some of I would say yeah. that you're a very skilled horseback rider. Yep. Thank you. And um, a- along with many other things, but you are my <laughs> mom. Yeah! <laughs> That's really loud. Sorry. <laughs> we had to change her, the for setup. Her ears. Um, and I'm very happy to introduce our next guest, my beautiful mother, Marilyn Clark. Hey, thank you for joining us. Thanks for coming on the show, Mom. You're welcome. Um, so I don't know if you had any questions prepared, but I certainly did. I have several. First, I just want to light up my joints, even oh, yeah. though uh, I don't think you're lighting up today with us, but I want you guys to get your joints, your best stuff, and light up for Woody's mom and my my mom-in-law, and we're just going to blaze up and feel good, because that's what we do. Yep. Get your get drinks, your edibles, edibles get, vapes. What? I'm using the PAX 3 today. I'm using the classic fire and joint. Ooh, with a, with a cool glass tip. Which was neat. Yeah. Glass tip is really where it's at. Okay. So I'm going to give you the, the honor and the grace. that we, We've been talking about this for a minute. We're very excited to have you here in this capacity. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you give you the honor first. But first, is there any questions you want to ask us? Um, I did not prepare for that. <laughs> okay, totally. That's totally fine. Libby, okay. take it away. Well, I wanted to know, in your, um, can I say your... Your age? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to know in your 64 and a half years, um, what is a like life lesson that has meant a lot to you or, or one of your biggest life lessons that you've learned on the planet so far? Um, We're starting out strong with just a, 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 a general, a big question. Yeah, that's a big question. Well, so, um, babies, (laughs) getting two babies, having two babies. What did that teach you? A lot. Like what? Like, um, a lot of caring, a lot of teaching, a lot of cleaning, a lot of love. Yeah. Was it a love that you haven't felt before? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it like moving from um, your country, your original country of the Netherlands? Because I moved with you. I'm also an immigrant, but um, you lived in Holland for uh, the ma- like a huge majority of your life, for 30 years before you moved to Canada. So yeah. what was it like coming to Canada and deciding to stay here? Um, I right away liked Canada. It was so big for me. Everything was big. I remember the washing machines were big and the <laughs> refrigerators were huge. So like, in, in Holland, everything's a little bit smaller? Small. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute! Well, and they build up, right? Like a lot of the houses yeah. are thin, thin and tall. Yeah. yeah. So you notice how much bigger things were. Meals? Did you notice were meals bigger? Like when you go to um, America? Meals, barbecues that we actually never did, but do, now it's changed. Like, <coughs> now my brother has a barbecue, uh, a hot top we had never seen, which now they do have hot tops as well. So that's in the 30 years that I'm uh, here now, because it, it was 30 years June 4th. And um, um, yeah. What, what have you seen Canada go through and change in the time that you've been here? Um, not all that much. Um, 
Like yeah. we stayed, we started in BC, and from there we went to Kelowna, which which I really really liked. The weather was a little bit warmer, but it is not anymore. Kelowna is beautiful. I loved I yeah. loved living yeah. in Kelowna. The mountains, I love the mountains. They're, mm. they're gorgeous. Holland doesn't have a whole lot of mountains. None. And now we are in Alberta. Yeah, and and uh, I I like um, here in Toronto. I feel very too many people. <laughs> There's a lot of people. Well, you live on a farm. Well, it's not a real farm. It it's uh, more like a, a ranch. It has a it has a stable. It has a, a ranch. It oh, has a ranch. ranch. Oh, okay. But it's like it has a lot of land, though. Yeah, but, yeah. but that is, is and, and no people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah. So that's been your time in Canada. I'm so curious about what you were like in, in Holland before you came in this adventure. And yeah, what were you up to before you had kids? Um, geez, <laughs> that is, uh, actually, yeah, I, I worked a lot. Uh, I started working as an optician. Well, I went, I worked and I went to school there in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam. Um, and, and the school system is different there, optician. right? Yeah. Like yeah. the high school system, you can choose three or four or two years. Well, and it then depends you can on your on grades your... in, in, the, in, yeah, and you can, you can move on. Like, yeah, you can start your but career that's earlier. But too, right? No. Um, Not everyone does 12 years of school here, but there's a grade 13 there, and you can leave in grade 11 or something. But I was still in school when I was 15, and it's just... Um, yeah, I think most people are in school till they're 16. Yeah. 18. 18. 18, yeah. You still have to follow, like, <laughs> certain... Even, even if you work three days, you, you go to school three days. That's not, I mean, the way that it. you've described it to me sounds like a, it sounds better than but our you school go to system school, in Canada. You go to school for a certain thing. So say you want to be like, but I, I wanted to be an optician. Yeah. Uh, and so I went to school for being an optician and I worked at an optical store yeah. nice. at the same time. When so, you were a teenager. Yes. Yeah. Uh, applied, see, that's dope. Applied yeah. It's skills. specialized skills yeah. too. You can just like, instead of going to that, like doing the four years of high school, the general math science social studies all of those things you yeah. focused your which i think is would be great for a lot of people anyways who already know what they want to do what what why did you want to be an optician um i i there were just at that po at that moment there were um uh, two jobs in the paper it was the optician one and the travel <laughs> agent um and the optician was the first one that came and I had already said yes. And then after that, the travel agency called and I could have worked there too. But by, by the, and that was a week later or so, but I was already working. So I had to say no to the travel. Did you um, want to do the travel agents? Um, in, in a way, yeah, because I loved traveling. But the optician, you know, I'm also good at math, so. Yeah. And you're unreal at sales. I always yeah. talk about how I am not great at sales. Um, there's like a block that I have where I always will, like, I, I don't want people to ever feel uncomfortable about spending their money. So and when he doesn't make them spend their money yeah, and so she just I'll, gives them I'll the go, thing. Generally, I'll go directly to the least expensive thing first. So sweet. Which is not a good sales tactic. But not tactic, good. Tactic, obviously. <laughs> no, because um, you have to start kind of maybe in the middle. Um, yeah. Yeah. You want people to be like, if that is what people want and they can afford it, eyes are very important. Um, but if you cannot afford it, then... There is options. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you for just have to go with, yes, um, you have to just go with the budget. It, it's important to see, it's important to hear. It, 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 it's, you only have two eyes. If something happens, even to one, you, there's a lot that you cannot do anymore. Yeah. I mean, and I grew up, I mean, when we moved to Kelowna, you opened your own business. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I, I hung out there a lot. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, like a crazy amount, but I hung out after there. After school. After school and on weekends and stuff. And How old were you? Uh, grade, that was grade four through six. Cute. Um, 
and I would see you sell and you were so comfortable. I guess it's because you worked with glasses so much. You were so comfortable just putting people, you know, putting glasses on people's faces Ugh. and, oh, this is why this looks good good on you. Like, take a look at yourself. Like, and telling, like, you were really made people, even just, like, recently, the most recent time that I've seen you um, in Alberta, you're retired now, but uh, like last year you were still working, I think, or the year two before years that, ago. two years ago. We and, actually, uh, uh, three of us quit now, so we're actually going to... I, I know that's that's good. They didn't forget about me. Yeah, like, she's over. getting a retiree party. Yeah, cute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I guess yeah, with COVID, it may, maybe didn't work. But what's your secret to making people feel comfortable in that capacity? I don't know. What is your secret to make you feel comfortable on the camera? Because <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot of attention. I am so aware of it. And I'm so empty. You're so cute. <laughs> You can take another shower before you go if you want. It's it's so nice to have you here. I love when we hang out. I love when we do our food and our John Mayer hangs. And we have a nice little space. We have, yeah. Yeah. But that was to, fun. Time. I had a great visit, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. And to answer that question, I think it's probably just practice. <clears throat> Same with you. Like, we did shot 10 episodes before and didn't release yeah, any Yeah, we them. have 10 episodes of complete unacceptable conversations. Yeah, Just we like... started we started releasing our episodes on our 11th episode. So you, it's not something that you're naturally just going to get if you mm. don't ever do it. No, it's, it's just that I'm aware that I'm on, on the camera and... and... <laughs> Stop looking at us! <laughs> I love it. Okay, I got a couple questions. Okay. What was it like? I want to get some dirt on Winnie for our audience here because we have some fans of Winnie who is a as an actor and like I I feel like I can hear your voice encourage her to do acting but what was that like when she was a kid and she she's obviously so expressive and adorable and cute and like you see this and you, how how did that go when did she come to you and say mom I want to be an actor and you were like awesome go to AMDA or did you guys, did you put her in drama classes when she was early, like a kid? Um, or how did this manifest? Let she us did, know. Uh, she did a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff um, in school. Every play she was the head leader or the leader, as little as she was in Little Red Riding Hood. And then there was, oh, I, I have videos of, of those that she was acting, actually. Little Winnie expressing, and you're saying to her, you are a little star. What are you saying to her? How are you coaching her along? In her last grade, uh, she came home and there was Emda, and she told me that that was what she really wanted to do. And and I said, but you had to be accepted. So her grades were very good. She was throughout school a breeze. Um, I tried really hard. <laughs> yeah, she talks I'm not about academic, that a lot. I, yeah. So I tried really, really hard. And um, I got mediocre grades, actually, like average grades, I would say. I didn't try at all, and I got average grades, too, and they hated that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I barely we showed up. that we would not be friends in high school. No, she would be like, fuck this guy. He doesn't show up to any classes, and he passes. Yeah. Sorry, though, as you were saying, you're saying... Well, you've always encouraged me. Like, I, like, I feel like you're the reason I went to AMDA. Like, I wanted, I was going to go to optical school you know which would have been so safe so, such hell for me <laughs> like it would have been i'm not good at math at all literally at all yeah. i'm actually getting better at it with my job because i do inventory every week <laughs> but um <laughs> but even like when we had the premiere in los angeles mm -hmm. for almost adults mm -hmm. like you were the one that was like do not miss this. She because wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to go. Yeah. I wouldn't have met Elise if it wasn't for that. She almost blocked my blessing. Thank you for having our back on that good idea that time. You know what? I, I do. I absolutely believe that what people want to do, you have to work for it hard. Then keep doing it. Yeah. Like, what can I say? Yeah, because it, there it is work, and but it also... <coughs> is like when you want to do it and when you're interested in doing it it feels less like work than and, and more just like something that you're doing currently like, <laughs> <Totes. yeah. clears throat> so when Winnie was a little kid before she started to get on stages 
and get in front of cameras and be accepted to big drama schools and colleges was there any activity that she would do like at home like maybe around family members that was like performing or was oh absolutely especially dance dance and singing (laughs) (laughs) yeah and she would stand in front of the tv with all these people I think uh, someone just knocked on our door. Go see who it is. We'll keep going. We might be getting a filter change here. All right. Yeah, that's absolutely true. We'll keep going. They did that on the third floor. Well, that's fine. Hi. Yeah, there you are. (laughs) You just want to keep going or? Can we do it right now? I guess so. Stop (laughs) it. That will be lit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cute. Let's just keep going. We're having a convo. Appreciate you guys. It's good what they're doing. They're doing good work out here. Yeah, they're coming to change our filter. But you were just about to say um, that she would do some stuff for family members or perform yeah. at home and yeah. stuff. In what way? What would she do? That's so cute. Um, do, do you remember we were in Spain and... Uh, the white dress? Yeah. And then uh, and it was Chris and Shelley's birthday and they got a doll from Opa. Oh, yeah. No, I don't really remember that too much. So we were uh, in Spain or Holland? Spain. Spain and um, my, it was my cousin, my cousins have birthdays like two days apart from one another. And for some reason, I like wasn't taking to my Opa very much as a young child, which is so crazy because as like when I started to grow older, I, I loved him. He's the most favorite person in the world. Opa's grandfather. In Opa, Dutch. yeah. Um, and uh, they got uh, <laughs> they got gassy. birthday presents. They got these two dolls, <coughs> and apparently I went up to my opa and said, "I'd really like a doll too, opa." <laughs> and oh. he left his granddaughter's <laughs> birthday party to take me, his other granddaughter, to go immediately get a doll because I um, didn't really. Like, I wasn't really open. Very or, shy. Or, or I was very shy with him. So as soon as he had that opportunity to do something with me and I wanted to do it, he was like, peace out, other grandchildren. <laughs> oh, my God. When he knows how to use her exclusivity. The big eyes. So this is the type of performance of manipulation. This is this is acting in a way where you, you get what you want. Was there any... Per- That's fucking hilarious. I love that story. But was there anything where you would purposely walk into a room and do a character or do a script? Or- I did a hunk of hunk of bun and love. I did Elvis. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> I remember that. Uh, yeah, she did that. I well, did that for everyone. If you had din- if you had people over <laughs> for dinner... We need to do that. <laughs> and you would tell her to do that? Or she no, would just come and do it? She would, like, just... Everybody knew about it, so... Uh, yeah, <coughs> my my earliest memory was in um, was in Squamish, where you guys were having like a dinner party or something, and I like came out with, I either put the music on or I knew the music that you were listening to because the music that you were listening to was the music I was listening to, so I knew those lyrics, and I remember like screaming the lyrics like in our living room trying to get we ha- our living room was right here and then our kid our kitchen dining area was over here and I was like in the living room like trying to get people's attention and I remember you came up to me and said that's very good but we're just gonna um like have some adult time right now or something like that and I was like fuck like if I'm not performing no one's gonna like make me famous because I always thought it was someone else that you also performed on on Ricky's uh wedding (coughs) I did the, so hold we're on. We're not singing with um, my with my guitar teacher. I don't know. This memory seems great Time too. Time of Let's... my life. I thought that was for okay. That was for the wedding. I thought that was for a retiree party. No, that was the the wedding. Okay, great. Let's yeah. just rewind that. Keep, sorry. <laughs> you thought performing was yelling lyrics in another room. Yeah, I was just trying to get the attention of the people in the other room because it was a bit, it was it was open, open concept, so they could see me in the living room while they were sitting <laughs> at the dining table, um, like having their chat or that is their, like their you, but whatever. you didn't go up to them like, hey guys, I'm gonna sing you a song. No, I just, just like other room like it. <laughs> yeah, I just started doing it for sure. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. <coughs>
<laughs> and I guess I've always performed my whole life. Like, I, it's always something that I've been interested in. I never wanted to not do it. So I'm really glad that I'm doing it and I'm still pursuing it. Thanks for the encouragement. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for the encouragement. I feel it in her story that you've played such a big, important role in her feeling good about doing that dream. I, I just think that she, she loved um, to perform. And, and to do stuff and yeah it was it was it felt natural for sure in mm-hmm. me so you had you have two kids when he has a brother yep Kos, who we is a, who we love and he's a dad of himself now and so you raised an older boy and a younger girl yes yes that was so that was that was that's amazing to have like two kids and to navigate that. What was that like as a mom? To have because Coase isn't a performer. He's 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 a Absolutely. little more chill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're opposites. So you sure. have this silly little girl, and you have this kind of mature, sweet little guy. Very uh, smart. Very smart. Very different. Tuned in. Totally different. Shout out Coase. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, got such a giving heart. Was there any? What were the moments where you were like? fuck, I wish I just uh, could kick these kids in their asses. Yeah, there must have been some funny moments where you had these two kids, or they were just amazing all the time. All, uh, really? And I'm not lying. Like they, <laughs> She got honestly, lucky, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was really... Yeah, I'm proud of both of them. And really, they, they were very good kids. Oh, that's so good. And they looked I think after they were pretty each good. other. There were moments, for sure. We both had moments where, but who doesn't? But overall, I think that we were pretty good kids, yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys are good people. I was so mm-hmm. lucky. That's I so was, sweet. Yeah, but I was always there. We were always doing stuff, so. Did you guys have any little rituals that you did go together? Like, maybe you guys should have, like, KFC Tuesday or something cute. That Because your dad, Jim, was away quite a bit, mm-hmm. right? Like, once you moved to Canada, Jim was, like, this whole new life cool thing and he was doing his career and he ended up figuring out doing something very special um, but you guys had a lot of time together the three of you right yeah the the first um in in the beginning he he um um he came home from work and Winnie and Coz and I were locked up in the in the room because I have seen the biggest bee <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't, um... You were really scared of bees. I was so scared. I was, like, hanging the laundry up, and and there's this big... And it was, and it, it was, it was a... And then, so he came home, and I said, Oh, no! There's the big bee, and we haven't been outside. Oh, my and, and it was a bird. <laughs> it was a hummingbird. It was oh my god! Hummingbird. But you'd but never they, seen a hummingbird before. I had never seen one before because we don't have them in the Netherlands. But that was my first day all alone with the two kids. <laughs> and you you didn't let us go outside you, because you thought there was a yeah. giant bee. You thought there was like historic giant insects outside yes. in this new land, and it was just a bird. And it was a hummingbird. Yeah, it so cute. It flutters really fast, and, and it, it comes very close to you. <coughs> and you and can hear it. Scared the pee out of me. <laughs> yeah. And and they have like a long beak that if you observe it as backwards, it could look like a long stinger. Well, exactly. And I thought, oh, we. So you that's took. That's gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so you took your kids into a room, and you're like. Attack yeah. of the killer bees. <laughs> they could not get outside until... Uh... And then Papa Jim came home. Yeah. And then he saved the day. Mm-hmm. And told you it was a bird. And and they're so beautiful, too. They are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, silky green skin and stuff like that. So what was it... That's incredible that you've had actually such an amazing experience. Because Winnie, like we say, like she's Dutch. She's very, very... Looks very Dutch. But like ultimately, you got... To grow up in Canada. Yeah. Again, shout out Jim. And and that's awesome that you're here. Uh, but like for you, you lived like an entire life in a nut. For me, I'm Canadian and I've really just spent time between here and America. You've lived in this whole other universe and then and then you you meet and love Jim and then you move to this new land, Canada. That must have been such an adventure for you and to like 
culture uh, shock and the and the language and everything yeah. like i love your accent like <laughs> but it reminds me wow i have so much respect for you in that way like to learn and live in a new place that's not your native tongue like that's quite the ride was that always the plan or did were you guys planning on moving back to holland we um if if that's what if we wouldn't be able to make a living in Canada, we would have gone back to all okay, so the plan was originally like, to move I and didn't stay. get my um my immigration papers till um, probably two years after I was here, and by that time i I didn't want to go back anymore, yeah. So okay, so you you had to wait until you got your immigration papers to see if you could really give it a shot. In terms of working, yeah, and I actually even went home. That I that I said we're gonna go home. We were on a vacation, and I thought I'm gonna stay here, back in Holland, and then Jim was gonna come here, and then I just I just was so confused. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually I I went back. Yeah. Yeah. How many years was that in? Like you were two years? After a year. After a year. After a year, and, and then I knew. And then, well, yeah, a year, a year and a half. And then I really knew that I wanted to stay in Canada. But it, it's like, because you, you think you move to a different country, and you think all your friends are missing you, but that's absolutely not the case. <laughs> they, they, you miss them, but they their they lives keep goes going further. On. Yeah. yeah. And, and on. so... You know, when I knocked on people's doors, my friends, and then, then they they had already moved on. They were like, oh, good to see you. But they had other friends and, you know, and not all the time for you. Well, you felt like you had all the time for them. Wow, yeah. <laughs> but that's, oh. ob- that's not the case. Nobody... Uh, of your friends will go sit on a chair and wait for you to come back. <laughs> oh my God, that is such a good, reasonable, healthy philosophy. And it's, yeah. there's no victimhood in that. And you're just straight up like, it's okay. People have their lives. I feel like yeah. we, sometimes an individual places their self-worth on what someone else decides to give them <laughs> attention wise and it's so unhealthy and yeah. it's a first class ticket to getting depressed it, it's so weird <laughs> it's actually very weird that you think that that, that i know and, how and, sick and, is that yeah. <laughs> oh, no. it's kind of like not uh it's it's just uh um, you see, that's that's how you can tell that you love yourself because you love yourself. Somebody else loves you too. So. <laughs> that's so true. You're dropping gems. That's so true. You can tell that you love yourself or that you're doing a good you're, job. You're such a snob that you that you think everybody's waiting for you. <laughs> or that you're like, I'm going to give me this love, so why wouldn't someone else give me this love? That's yeah. amazing that you, yeah, that's such a beautiful philosophy. I feel we get hung up sometimes on uh, the idea of other, like somebody else's idea of you. Mm-hmm. You know, we like. I feel like for me, that's such a sometimes a, a trigger. It's such like a low freak, easy, easy low frequency place to go. Like they don't like me. Like it's mm-hmm. just like who cares? Nobody. Like or, like, <laughs> like like they don't have time for me. It's like so what? So yeah. I should be doing something cool too. Like, yeah. good for them. Like, cruise on. Have a good day. Enjoy your friends. That is how you learn to move on, really. And, and that is how you learn to move forward. Like, yeah. It's really yeah. our first experience of, of, like, a breakup because friendships just don't last forever. They're seasons. They, I, I, I don't know very many people. Some do. Some, some don't. I really don't know very many people who have had a lifelong friendship. Like, I, I really don't. If they're not like married or well, something. Well, that's not true because I, I, I have friends uh, that I know ever since, say, high school and that I'm still friends yeah, with. Yeah, you know them, but you don't talk to them like, or see them all the time. I No, not all the time, but that, that, that's not French. That doesn't matter for friendship. Like friendship, you you don't have to be all it the time. It wants to go to you. It, it, I know. Yeah, it likes you. <laughs> like, Find the Dutch lady. <laughs> Anyway, it, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't think friendship has to be. Yeah, I think there's ideas about friendship that 
create constructs around mm. what friendship is and that's actually what ends up breaking the friendship apart because if you have expectations for your friend to sit and wait for you for your friend to never um uh like uh like um, like argue with you or or, or challenge you disagree. or disagree with you if you have these expectations that a friend should only be certain things or a friendship should provide certain things I think you're going to get your heart broken because mm -hmm. everyone really needs to do what's best for them and that just isn't what's best for everyone like we're yeah. ne it's never going to be that I used to tell you too that, that, that there were rules in the house and, I, and you would say uh, and I would say, Winnie, I'm not your friend. I'm your mom. I know. Which is totally a different Well, I thing. was confused because I thought you were my friend. I know, but that's <laughs> not... Then I wouldn't feed you and, and you know... That's we'll, true. You were my like, caretaker. You kept me alive. I'm your mom. <laughs> it's I, so cute. You lived <laughs> in me for nine months. I know. Right there. There's, there's a crazy tether between mothers and... Uh, children you yeah. can feel it that's yeah that just doesn't it's different with dads i think um because we lived in there that's wild yeah that's a wild so thing. It's, it's the first vibration you know when you come in like from spirit to the third dimension which is matter like this space here where you have a name and i have a name you're mm -hmm. in the first frequency vibration energy core yeah. source that you understood you came from your whole perspective of this dimension start it here <laughs> and, and while you were in my belly, actually, at one point, the doctor, you know, he had, they had these things still that they put on your uh, belly and listen in their ear. And you were so fast because you had so much room left from what Kozla had left. And she kicked around and, she, and he was like, ow. <laughs> playing in there <laughs> that was cute. so funny i was like get out of here get get away from my mom's belly <coughs> that's so cute i think um you were more playing i think because we we played that at nighttime too i would like poke you somewhere and you would boom yeah. you were so fast I was, I was having that a good must time be in such there. a trip to feel something move in your yeah. belly i had a cup of coffee sitting on my belly because your belly is pretty big right yeah you so would have been the cutest pregnant oh, and she gave it a kick and the old coffee went <laughs> So I've always been a shit disturber. Oh my god, that's so we shake cute. Shake things up. For sure. I think um, <clears throat> also to touch back on that friend stuff, which I really like we were talking about, the friend stuff, the clarity on that, is I think sometimes the expectation for friends is a companion. Where I think a friend is a type of a companion, but yeah. like, uh, it, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, that, that you're allowed to, to, to move. You're allowed to like fluctuate and have friends for different reasons at different times mm -hmm. yeah. in different seasons of your life. And to, to really hold that authentic, to allow that companionship to be in its truest authentic form, it has to really serve you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not following it really serves you and your collaboration isn't making something bigger and brighter for both of you, it's like just... Like, uh, like, I love you, but, like, go find something that, like, boosts you. We were talking about this. Mm -hmm. Your friends have to inspire you. Yes, they absolutely you have to give... Everybody has to give each other energy. If somebody drags you down... Gotta get rid of let them. Let them go. That's <laughs> facts. Yeah. Or, or just let them go, yeah. I was like, gotta get rid of them. Gotta <laughs> put them in the ground. I have a little bit of, of Italian in me You've now. You've been hanging out with Italians. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even we said yesterday, we said, we said something... Um, about you are um, you are who your closest friends are and thank then we you. decided more accurately that you you are thank you made up of like the people that you surround yourself with because your closest friends aren't always the people that you hang out with all the time no yes yeah, big facts and and you can see people every day and they will never be your friend yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I think the name of this episode is Friends. Friends with Marilyn. Oh, I love that. So that's interesting. So some people can just be in your experience and serve a purpose and you never truly connect. Yeah, absolutely. And you may even like this person. Absolutely. But you're not going to like like take them home. Like, you know, mentally. Like, you're not going to be not like... Gonna draft have, them have, you're not going to invest yeah you don't have conversations with them as much or uh, but that doesn't mean that you don't like them mm -hmm. 
But as I say, not everybody will be your friend, and, and, and that's okay. Is what is the word for just like is it an acquaintance when you like yes. know someone and but you're not friends? I like love just, a good acquaintance. Yeah, I think we have a lot of acquaintances. I have many acquaintances all around the world. Yeah, <laughs> what, and you do too. What for you personally? And I also want our audience Comments. members to know. Yeah, what makes a friend to you? What What are your expectations of of, of friendship? And what What makes a friend to you? What's a good friend in what, your eyes? What makes you want to draft someone into your mental home? I don't know. It, it's uh, It's kind of uh, the same idea. Uh, as when you meet someone and you fall in love only I with agree. friendship uh, there's Ooh. always something yeah like there is a, an, an like oh I like that person yeah you know it's a spark or you say oh yeah yeah she's a very nice person yeah like do you hear the difference yes. totally like oh I, I, I had so much fun I really like yeah. that person. I'm intrigued oh, yes. very nice lady I couldn't agree more. I'm thinking that's about a, like my friends. Always a friends. different. Yeah. That is how you get a, into a friendship. Yeah, there's just a vibe. Mm. Yeah, the friends, friends is so accurate for that. I would love to say though how you just communicated so much to us through acting. She did dialogue and acted and told us emotionally. No wonder oh. you're such a good actor. That, I just you. wanted to point that out. What did I do? You <laughs> went. I like that person, and oh, and yeah. through your acting. <laughs> Through your acting, you conveyed the words that I would describe as intrigued. You were sparked. You and you were fu- <laughs> and but you just showed us by acting, so that was amazing. Yeah. But back to what you were just saying on friends. Well, no, I was just agreeing. That's a great definition of just like there's there's just something that you can't really explain. It's almost like a guttural, intuitive, intuitive feeling where you're like, I just want to spend more time with you. Yeah. I just want, and I just I think that there's something here, and I've had that with all of my really good friend friends. You know, like. My... But but then but then the friends of some friends, oh, you're yeah. like, oh, they're really nice people, but like. I don't, I don't, like, need to, like, see them again. Yeah, isn't that an interesting thing? <laughs> you would think that if you were friends with someone... You'd think that you were that friends with everyone friends they're friends with. Yeah, friends would be your friends, too, because you, like... But that's not just not the case. Hardly ever. I don't think I've really ever... I want it to be the case so much that I, I try. Yeah. Like, you know I've always done this with your friends, mm-hmm. and I feel blocked out and kept out when you don't invite me to some friend things, but we've been a lot more healthier lately, where Winnie has her life, and I have my life, and we have our collaboration life, and it's great. Lots of which is here, by the way, so yeah. thanks for joining us. Uh, but yeah, it's so interesting. Did you ever notice that? How, like, you can be really good friends with someone, but then, like, their friend, you're just like... Eh, Because, like, that friendship is serving something in that person that you don't necessarily resonate with. Exactly, but that is why, you know, you have friends and you have acquaintances and you have people... People. (laughs) Sometimes it's just (laughs) people. Sometimes it's just people. And that's cool. What? I love that. And you cannot take on the whole world as your friend. Exactly. (laughs) You have to be very selective. Do you have any um, life advice for um, our audience members? What, how have you made it this this far? So in graciously, keep breathing. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. It's like Wim Hof. Live your life how you like it the most. It's your life. We only get one chance. Um, you know, stay healthy. What have you done when you've been in a, a challenging moment or a really hard time in your life? How do you get through it? Just one foot in front of the other? Absolutely. Like, sure, uh, um, there was rough times, like uh, especially my mom and dad passing away. That was hard. But uh, it gets easier as longer it is. And, and uh, they will, they're here. They mm-hmm. will never be anywhere else anymore um but there's a time for us that comes comes like that too it's it's you reason with yourself sometimes and then i mean i'm i'm very very easy going i'm not at at all anymore like how i was when i was 30 or 40 or 20 you're just chilling 
I most of the time, yeah, I'm just 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 being angry doesn't seem doesn't, doesn't get feel that good in you. It doesn't get that much done either. I find. It's, it's, I realize that like getting angry, it's so a personal indulgence. It's like not productive. No, like, not you know, at all. Even if you're a fighter, like professional fighters, they're not in there mad at that person. They're no. like respect, and then they do their craft. Yeah, right. It's like it just getting angry is like kind of just exhaustive. And yeah, so I'd love to hear that wisdom from you and where you've, where you've come from and what you've done. That's so cool. It's a learning process. It's that simple. Every, every day is maybe a, another step. I don't know. Or, or a little, just, just see it like that someone told me once that there was a bucket. And if you just learn something, you can put a tiny little piece in that bucket. So that bucket will take always to you know forever to to get full so that means that we can keep learning and and you know and and when your bucket maybe is full that's when you're going i i, I don't know but i love that seems, theory yeah seems, seems pretty good seems great I, I was i was actually thinking about this that this morning because when we do go see abraham hicks again i kind of wanted to ask them about um this idea that you're never finished that, right. that there's always more, but there's something comforting about completion in the human experience. Yeah. And so, like, where, how do we find that balance between there's always more, there's always more, there's always more, and feeling whole and complete at the same I, time? I think mm. that's how people grow old, is to always be wanting still to, you know, like, grandpa, he's like uh, 93, he probably always has something to do. Yeah, he mm. keeps himself busy for sure. No, that's important. Yeah, and and I think if you if you start to sit on the couch and and you're sick and you're feeling sorry for yourself, then it, yeah, it finishes even faster. Yeah, it's almost like you're communicating to the nature in you that like I'm I'm ready to wrap up here. You have to want to. You have to want to. Bars. <laughs> Yes, you can't like buy desire either. You know, yeah. you have to want to do something. That's so beautiful. You have to want to do everything. Energy. You have to want to have that energy. You just have to want to and give it, and like and then, show up and to then be it. Not be hard on yourself if you have a day where it's not no. there. Yeah, and just stop punishing yourself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, because you start beating yourself up and, and um, it's not necessary. There's no progress in nobody, that. Nobody remembers that in two years from now. <laughs> it's just all fades away. Yeah. I'll, you know, if you make a mistake, uh, get over it. It will go away eventually. It's not a big deal. No. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's good. That's a good place to end, actually, because we have a, a train to catch, but... That was beautiful. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Wow. Yeah, that was so nice. That is exactly what I needed to hear. Coming from the guy who just smacked himself in the face because the mics didn't work. <laughs> that was perfect. Wow. Yeah. What an honor. I could really sit here and dive deeper on this oh, friend thing and this you. life thing with you more. Thank you for having me. Though. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you much. for coming on. Love you. Oh, I love it's you. So nice I to love have you. I love you. Thank okay. you so much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to end with a fun fact or can I read something real quick? Um, no, we got we to gotta go. We got to bounce right now? Yeah. Okay, let's get this one on the plane. Okay, love okay. you guys. Thanks. Subscribe for more. Thanks for Bye-bye. watching. Subscribe and like and comment and do all those things. <clears throat> The Discipline Stoners! The gateway drug to mindfulness. Gateway drug to mindfulness, let's roll one up and take a hit. Gateway drug to mindfulness, let's roll one up and take a hit. Gateway drug to mindfulness. Let's roll one up and take a hit. Hey, Wim! Oh my god. <laughs> yes? We, uh, we got a new thing. Oh, right! We need to tell you about our new thing. Support the show now on Patreon and get a bunch of private perks.